Bonjour et bienvenue sur On peut le dire. So, new introduction to the series On peut le dire to help you with your French pronunciation. Let me know how you find this format with basically my face. Hopefully I'm not looking in weird directions. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be looking because I've never done that sort of video before. Um, and I'm going to be using that sort of notebook so that I don't have to spend time editing and adding subtitles and captions and stuff. Um, and also because the background is a little bit in your face. Today we're looking at a few keywords, less than in the previous introduction because I'm trying, not less, fewer than the, in the previous introduction because I'm trying to keep things a bit shorter. And it's promising because I've already rambled on for 45 seconds without actually giving you any content. So welcome. Pronunciation versus intonation. In this series we'll try and cover both but we'll start with pronunciation. Pronunciation, to keep things simple, is the sounds coming out and how accurate they are. So if you're speaking French and you say bonjour, then that's not proper French. It should be bonjour because your sounds didn't come out right. You did on instead of on. So that's pronunciation issues. Intonation is having the French melody to your sentences. So in English, you tend to go a lot up and down and emphasis goes on different places. And in French, we're very much putting the emphasis towards the end of everything, so it creates a different rhythm, a different pace. Intonation is mimicking that pace. Pronunciation is coming out with the right sounds. If you get the intonation right, it can completely help conceal the fact that you got some pronunciation mistakes in there. So we, can, we will learn to use that to your advantage. You'll learn to sort of hijack people's brains so they don't realize you're, you've said some sounds wrong. Next. Phonemes and graphemes. Phonemes are the smallest units of sounds. So the im sound stands for smallest unit and phon for sounds. And then graphemes are the written codes for these sounds. Okay? So phonemes, units of sounds, graphemes, the written code for it. Written code, uh, I'm putting here in two parts. So we have a written code you're used to which is the spelling, basically. And then what we've done when linguists in the 19th century figured, oh, it's really difficult to know how to pronounce these words that I'm learning in a foreign language, because believe it or not, there was a time without computers and iPods and recordings and all of that. So they had to figure out a way. How can we show what you're supposed to say when you see a written word? Because each language has different rules for spelling and sounds. Yeah, so you've learned spelling and sounds rules in primary school for English, but obviously the French rules are not the same and German aren't the same, etc. Well, fear not, because gorgeous people in the 19th century created the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. And we recognize it when we see those square brackets, okay? So if you see some little codes and there's square brackets around, in this series, it means I'm actually using the IPA and not the usual spelling. It's not the usual alphabet. However, it wouldn't be fun if we didn't make things a bit tricky. The IPA uses some codes that are very similar to alphabet letters. They are not going to match. So I've put two, for example, that really tripped me up when I was learning the IPA in the first place. I think it must have been at university about 10 years ago. Um, this, as a French person, I'm seeing two U. They are the same. Except this one has the square brackets, so it's the IPA code, and therefore it's not an U, it's OU. So there's a difference, okay? You see the different sign here? Like, so here, this one incidentally sounds the same, but we need to bear in mind it won't necessarily always be the case. This is the letter E in the alphabet. For you as an English person, it would be I. But when you see that in IPA, you don't, see, you don't say I, you say E. As an English person, you might want to say you. But no, when you see that in the IPA, you say OU. OU. Okay? So you need to bear that in mind. Something I forgot to write here, but I'm not going to add it in now because, to be fair, to be completely honest, it's about the eighth time I'm trying to record this, so I'm getting a little bit tired of this. Um, sometimes in the IPA, we have some codes here, that have nothing to do with any letters of the alphabet. They might freak you out at first, but I personally think they're quite nice because they're brand new, so your brain isn't going to get confused with something else. You already know that's attached to it. Like with this one, 
you have to sort of let your brain know, no, I know it looks like you, but it's not you. It's also because the context difference. So we have to sort of tweak the learning we already have, which is a little bit harder than just have something brand new thrown at us and just get used to it from scratch. Personal opinion, maybe you will find it different, but maybe that can reassure you. So to show you what this looks like. Yeah, that's correct. I've looked up the word bonjour in my big French dictionary. And this is the IPA code that follows, okay? And I think I've done something wrong here that I realized earlier, so let me fix it quickly. To do, do. Mm. Never mind, I'm not going to manage to fix it unless I start over, so I'm not going to start over. So, we have our word bonjour, we talked about it earlier, seven letters, five sounds. You can see here in the IPA code, one, two, three, four, five codes, five sounds. Makes sense, because each code in the IPA stands for one phoneme, five phonemes, seven spelled letters, okay? Now, there are different possibilities based on that. We can see that sometimes life is nice and easy, and sometimes you have a spelling, which goes with a grapheme with the IPA, which goes with a phoneme that is exactly the same in your mother tongue, in your first language, as it is in your foreign language, in your target language. Here, but easy. So we can do a little victory dance, we can be happy, party, and then move on and start to look at the complicated stuff. Although it's not that complicated. Sometimes you have one letter here, so one spelt letter. It goes with one grapheme for the IPA, one phoneme. So far, so good. But... Although it will be slightly similar to the English, it might be also slightly different. And there you have to, what we talked about earlier about tweaking things, you have to tweak what you already know a little bit and it might take some getting used to. For example, if you see this letter in English, you'll be tempted to say je, as in jellyfish or jolly. But in French, we don't, we say je. So you get rid of the initial je. Okay, I don't know if you've ever noticed in English, it's actually two sounds that merge, je. So you start with a de. Je, je. In French, we don't. It's just one. It's the end of it. Je. So you just snap the beginning out of your usual sound. You need to get used to that. So that can be a little bit tricky. Hence the little warning sign here. Pay attention. Sometimes you have one spelt letter that you already know in your language, but it ties into a grapheme which has an exclamation mark on its end because this is a sound that does not exist in your language at all, in your first language. These are the sounds that come from scratch and you have to practice, practice, practice with muscle memory to get them sorted. This one often stresses out uh, foreigners, especially English people, because you don't have it at all in your language. It's actually not that big a deal and we'll get around to it at some point and you'll see it's, it's not that bad and you can probably also quite well get by without doing that sound right. Next, we're going to look at the meat of that word, which is the vowel sounds. We'll see vowels in the next episode. So sometimes you have two spelt letters, but they actually combine to form only one grapheme in the IPA here. So that means they're only making one phoneme. For example, in French, if you see O and N together, you don't pronounce them separately. You don't say on, you say on. So that's only one sound. And additionally, this one has the exclamation mark. So it's also one sound that doesn't exist in English. So you have to be careful with it. O and U, if you see that in French, the rule is you say OU. That's a phoneme that exists in English, although we make it a little bit snappier in French. Uh, it exists in English, but we don't use it for the same spell spellings. Sorry about that. We don't use it for the same spellings in French. So here it's another matter of seeing something familiar, saying something unfamiliar. Okay, that's going to be it for today. I've managed to make it under 10 minutes. It's probably as good as it gets, I'll be completely honest. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Let me know if I'm looking in a completely weird direction and you know I should be looking somewhere else. If you have any tips, let me know about that. Um, like, comment and subscribe if it helps and share out if you know some people this might help as well. Au revoir!